Hello everyone, and welcome back to K-Tips. If you're new here, welcome to the journey where we master containers together. This video is part of a series designed to guide both beginners and experienced developers on how to work with containers like Docker. In the first video of this playlist, we explored why developers should work with containers, how they simplify development, streamline deployments, and ensure consistent environments across systems. If you haven't watched it yet, click the link appearing now or check out the link in the description below. I highly recommend starting there to understand the why before jumping into the how. Today, we'll take the next step and learn how to install Docker on Windows 11. If you're using Ubuntu, be sure to check out my other video specifically covering the installation process on Ubuntu. Visit the link popping up now, and I'll also include it in the description. Docker is one of the most widely used containerization platforms, celebrated by developers globally for its ability to standardize applications across environments, making it perfect whether you're building microservices, running AI or ML workflows, or simply experimenting. By the end of this video, you'll have Docker Desktop installed and ready to use on your Windows machine. So, let's jump right in and get started. First, open your browser and search for how to install Docker Desktop on Windows. Click on the first result, which takes you to the official Docker website. Here, you can download the installation package and check the system requirements. To install Docker Desktop, make sure your system meets the following requirements. 1. At least 4 GB of RAM. 2. A 64-bit processor. 3. Windows 11. 4. WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, must be enabled on your system. Now, let's verify these on my system. To check for WSL, go to the search bar and type Turn Windows Features On or Off. In the list that appears, scroll down to Hyper-V, it's not enabled on my system, so I'll leave it as is. WSL, it's also unchecked, so I'll enable it by checking the box and clicking OK. Windows will install the required dependencies and ask for a system restart. However, I'll delay restarting for now because I want to download the Docker installer first. Back on the Docker website, I'll click the download link for Docker Desktop for Windows, x86-64. The download has started, and I'll be back once it's finished and after restarting my system. Now that the Docker Desktop installer has been downloaded, I'll open my file explorer and navigate to the downloads folder. Here's the Docker desktop installer. I'll double click it to start the installation. When prompted for permission to make changes to my device, I'll click yes. The installer asks if I want to use WSL2 which I'll keep checked since it's recommended. It also asks if I'd like to add a desktop shortcut, and I'll leave that checked too. Finally, I'll click OK to proceed. While the installation runs, let me quickly mention Docker Hub. Signing up for Docker Hub is essential as it gives you access to a massive library of pre-built container images, saves time, and allows you to push your own container images to the cloud. It's great for collaboration and deployment, and features like image versioning, private repositories, and automated builds make it indispensable for container management. The Docker desktop installation was successful. Now, it's important to restart your computer to ensure Docker works properly. Before restarting, here's a quick note for those logged in as non-root users. You may need to add your user to the Docker users group. To do this, 1. Open the search bar and type Computer Management. 2. Run it as an administrator if you have the rights. 
3. Navigate to local users and groups then to groups. Four, scroll down to find Docker users, right-click it, and add your user to the group. That's it. I'll restart my computer now, and we'll continue from there. After restarting my computer, I can now see the Docker Desktop tool. If it's not visible for you, you can search for Docker Desktop in the search bar, or if you left the shortcut option checked during installation, you'll find the shortcut on your desktop. Simply click on it to launch Docker Desktop. Once it opens, I'll accept the Docker subscription service agreement, use the recommended settings, and click Finish to complete the setup. Docker will ask to make changes to my device, and I'll click Yes to proceed. As I mentioned earlier, it's important to have a Docker Hub account. If you don't have one yet, you can create it now by clicking on Create an Account. This will open your browser, where you'll need to enter your email, username, and password to sign up. Since I already have an account, I'll log in directly by entering my email. A login page will appear in my browser where I'll enter my password. After logging in, I'll allow the browser to open the Docker Desktop app, and I'll be redirected back to the application. Once Docker Desktop opens, you'll see a welcome survey. You can skip this step or select your role and intended use. As a data scientist, I'll select my role and indicate that I'll be using Docker for AI and machine learning. Then click Continue to proceed. Now, the Docker Desktop tool is fully set up. Here, you can manage your containers, but since I don't have any containers yet, the list is empty. You can also manage your Docker images or search for available ones directly from the tool. We won't be creating or using containers in this video, but stay tuned for upcoming videos where I'll show you how to set up a Docker image and use it in the VS Code IDE. So make sure to subscribe to K-Tips, and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and share. Happy coding and debugging, and see you in the next one on K-Tips.